everybody. Uh, happy daylight savings time. Thank you for waking up extra early this morning. Um, so we've got three Passover cooking classes slash demonstrations this morning. I'm going to be making a Passover chocolate chip mandel bread. Um, Sarah's going to make flourless chocolate cupcakes, and then Beth is going to make meringues. Um, all right, let's get started. So if you are cooking along, go ahead and start to preheat your oven, set it to 350. Um, all right, and now you can see what we are doing. We are going to start by going over our ingredients. We need three eggs. We need one cup of sugar. I've already pre-measured everything. We need a half a cup of oil. Any kosher for Passover oil will do. I'm using grapeseed oil this morning. If you use coconut oil, just make sure it's in its liquid form. Sloan, um, we just had two more people come in. So maybe we should right. just, um, are, did, did we, we say preheat over. the oven? Yes, so, all right, we will restart. I see somebody is connecting, so we can just wait a minute. And then all of you will learn about eggs and oil for a second time. All right. Oh, Hazan Mimi, good morning. Okay, is somebody letting the other people in the waiting room in? Yep. All right, good deal. Okay, so we're gonna start again by preheating our ovens to 350 degrees. And now let's go over on regular bake. Oh, answering the question there. We are preheating our ovens to 350, not using convection right now. All right, so let's get our ingredients together. I have already pre-measured, but we will go relatively slowly to let everybody measure along with us. We will need three eggs. We will need one cup of granulated sugar half a cup of oil. You can use any kosher for Passover oil. I was saying before, if you choose to use coconut oil, just make sure that it's in its liquid form. I have a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of almond extract. If you don't like almond or someone is allergic, you can increase the vanilla to two teaspoons. We also have one and a half cups of matzah cake meal. And just in case you're not familiar, there are lots of different brands. Really important that it's cake meal and not just matzah meal. This recipe will not turn out good if you're using matzah meal instead of cake meal. We also have a half a cup of potato starch very easy to find around Passover time. Again, lots of different brands. All right, and six ounces of chocolate chips. I tend to be a little bit more liberal than six ounces. Although I will say that the last time I made it, my daughter actually told me that I had too many chocolate chips in it. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Beth, are we good to go? I think we're good to go. Um, All right. Can you put in the chat or unmute yourself if you're baking along with us or just watching and baking later? Who is anyone baking right now? Just so we know to make we're sure. Waiting or not. It doesn't seem, I think people are watching and then baking later. Okay. So we can All right. get then going. Let's get moving. Okay. So I always like, to use a separate container when I'm putting eggs into something. That way, if one of your eggs is not good, it doesn't ruin your entire recipe. So I'm going to 
crack my eggs into the separate container. I also have a trash bowl over here. That's always convenient. So far, so good. That way also, if you get a shell in there, it's easier to get out. Okay. All right, so um, oops, sorry about that. We are going to beat our eggs until they're a light yellow and kind of fluffy. How is your mixer so quiet, Sloan? Mine is like so loud, it's crazy. This is the best mixer, I hand mixer I have ever had. Who um, makes it? I, it's Braun and I originally had one probably 15 years ago and it eventually broke and I had to go on to eBay to find the exact same one because they don't make it anymore. All right, oh, now we're gonna- I'm gonna research it because mine is ridiculously, ridiculously loud. Oh yeah, this one's great. All right, I just added in the sugar and again, we're gonna mix until kind of creamy looking. And I have my mixer on speed two right now. Okay, and if you can tell, it's kind of like a, a lighter yellow and looks a, a little almost creamy. All right. With our mixer running, we're going to add our oil and our extracts. I love the flavor that the almond extract adds. But like I said, if anyone has allergies, it's absolutely okay to just double the vanilla. Okay, that's looking really nice. All right, right now I have my matzo cake meal and I have my potato starch and I am going to mix them together. When I use potato starch, I like to put it through a sieve or a sifter. It tends to be a little bit on the clumpy side. So doing that just helps it to uh, incorporate more easily into our recipe. All right. I'm just going to whisk that together so it's mixed gently so it doesn't end up all over my kitchen. All right, and then with the mixer running, we're going to add the dry ingredients into our egg mixture. We'll do it in like three batches and that's really mostly so it doesn't end up all over the kitchen. You'll see there will still be a big puff of uh, of cake meal and um, potato starch though. With most baking, you really want to try not to over mix things. So we'll just incorporate that. And then in between each addition, we're just going to scrape down the sides of the bowl, make sure that we get everything mixed in there. And when you start to mix things in, have your mixer on low again, so that you don't end up with powder all over the place. 
this dough is going to end up pretty thick. So let's scrape down the sides again, get everything mixed in. Okay. Now we will add our third addition. Again, you can see how thick that uh, that batter is. Sloan, could you add banana extract? You absolutely. Um, my recipe calls for chocolate chips. My family is not a fan of nuts in their baked goods. Um, if you happen to like nutty things, um, you can definitely either in place of or in addition, you can um, add whatever kind of nuts you like. See the batter is really nice and thick. And could you fold in blueberries? Um, you could, uh, when the blueberries break, um, burst as they're cooking though, there is um, the chance that your mandel bread could be much softer than a normal mandel bread because of the juice, so the extra liquid in, okay. in the recipe then. What about dried? You could put in whatever you want. I like this recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for people who don't know, that's my mom. And um, my dad is a huge fan of blueberries and things. All right, I'm just trying to get, because it's a very thick batter, the rest of that off the beaters. All right. Okay, now we're gonna fold in our chocolate chips. This is actually a really nice, quick, well, this part is quick <laughs> recipe. All right, when I fold things in, I like to kind of go down the middle and then turn things over. We want the chocolate chips all the way through. Okay, now one thing I forgot to put in the recipe that was sent out to you is that at this point, we usually let the batter sit for about 15 minutes before we make it into loaves. Um, I actually already have some prepared so that you don't have to watch me sit. Today's batter, to be honest, actually looks much better than, uh, than the one I made yesterday and pre-prepared. All right, now we are going to get our pan ready. Um, Beth actually turned me on to these. These are pre-cut cookie baking sheet parchment paper, and it is very convenient. That's it, nice and easy. Um, so when we form the loaves of the Mondel bread, this is very sticky dough. 
yes, parchment paper is the best. This is very sticky dough. So I have an extra little container uh, of my oil. I just poured some on my hands, very good for your skin, but also good so that the dough does not just completely stick to you. Okay. All right, so we are going to divide the dough in half as best we can. Sloan, um, Genia yes. is saying, do you refrigerate the dough before you form the loaves? Um, you can actually, you could, and um, then you could probably just let it sit for five to 10 minutes, but you actually don't have to. You can just let it sit for 15 minutes and you can at that point while you're letting it sit wash out your your prep bowls that you've been using um but yes you could put it in the refrigerator in fact if you put it in the refrigerator um you probably won't then have to refrigerate it after you make it into the loaves. So this is a, a recipe that I've been making for years, many, many, many years. Um, as Beth knows and, and Ruth knows, um, I usually host Passover and between the two seders, I usually have between 50 and 60 people. And I've been making this mandel bread for a long time. It's always a big hit. Um, over the years, I've adapted the recipe and I used to let it sit just on the counter for the 15 minutes, form the loaves and then just pop it in the oven. What I've learned over the years though, is that if you do that, when you put it in the oven, the dough just spreads and it becomes flat and it's not as successful. So by refrigerating it at this step, before we make it into loaves, or by refrigerating it after you make it into loaves, it will actually um, hold its shape and be much more mandel bread like. All right, so if you see, I'm just forming it <clears throat> roughly into two loaves, yeah, about the same size. Maybe not my best division work, but that's okay. All right, and since this dough is so cold already, we can now um, pop it into the oven for 30 minutes. I'm going to do that now. setting my timer all right and I am coming back to you with a loaf that I had baked this morning okay hang on one sec this is very hot so make sure we're going on to this step so that I can show you how to cut the loaf. So I made this one this morning. And when you make mandel bread or biscotti, which is sort of the Italian version of mandel bread, it's a twice baked cookie. You bake it the first time in its loaf form, and then you slice it put it back on the baking sheet and put it back in the oven. It's best to slice it while it's still really hot. Otherwise, it tends to just crumble and fall apart. So I am using a serrated knife, but you really don't have to because look how nice and easily it cuts when you're doing that. So this recipe would have made three loaves. This 
part that I baked this morning was taken from the same batch that I made last night to refrigerate so that I could show everybody all of the steps and not have you sitting around watching me drink coffee for a long time. All right, again, be careful because the baking sheet is still hot out of the oven. Now we're just going to carefully turn this around so you can see because my parchment folded there. Okay. Yeah, so that sliced really beautifully. All right, and now we're gonna put this back in the oven for another five to 10 minutes. Um, the length of time really depends on how crispy you like your cookies. Um, I usually do it for like on the, the lower side, more like five to seven minutes. It's so funny, Sloan, people have like, some people turn the oven off or turn the oven down for the second bake and some people keep it at the same temperature. Um, so how long, five to seven minutes? Yeah, I just put a timer on my handy watch for seven minutes. Um, all right, and let me actually get another baking sheet so that we can make another loaf there and answer questions and just chit chat if anyone has any questions. Okay, so does anybody have any questions at this point? Do I get All right. to when I come over later? Absolutely. All right, so again, super important when you're making the loaves, don't forget to oil your hands because this gets very sticky. All right, so um, my daughter, Hunter, will be very happy that uh, I now have two batches of this going because this is one of her favorite Passover desserts. I think my dad is a fan too. Me too. <laughs> and my mom. All right. There's a question, can you freeze these for Passover? Um, yes, you can. You can also um, make them up to a week beforehand and just put them in an airtight container. Okay, so you'll see I divided that dough roughly into three sections. Now, since this batch has been sitting out, I will put these formed loaves into the refrigerator for 15 minutes. Otherwise, um, as I have learned over the years, they spread terribly. And in past years, this is not a professional baking thing at all. I would put them in and then go check them in the oven after you know five, 10 minutes and they'd be flat and spread out and uh, um, I would put on gloves and clean gloves and very carefully try to push it back together. Um, yeah, not a good way to do it. Refrigerating the dough beforehand is, is definitely the better way to go. Um, it's much like when you bake sugar cookies that are gonna be cut out, you need to refrigerate the dough so that they keep their shape. Uh, Sloan, I have a question. Uh, yes. If you, you you can use regular flour and gluten free flour with the same exact uh, measurements. Um, I honestly have only made this recipe for Passover. 
Um, but I don't see why not. Almond flour would probably be different. Um, no, I have different. like gluten-free flour that is like they say one-to-one. -one. It's like a regular flour. That's what I'm asking. Yes, I think that you could that you could do that. I can't guarantee it will turn out quite the same because I haven't experimented with that. Um, okay, needing more oil, but yes, I believe that that it yeah. would be. I'm gonna yeah. try this for Shira. Oh, yeah, so great. This is so great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, so now you see from an entire batch that we do get three loaves, yeah, more or less equal size. The papa bear, mama bear, baby bear, it's not exactly equal size, close enough. All right, I'm gonna pop that into the fridge. Or I'm going to try to, because I realized I just put that on my bigger baking sheet. Okay, we're in the fridge, coming back. Okay, have we had any other questions? Yes. Um, Sloan, I've seen muntle bread with maraschino cherries in it. Do I have to you make can, any accommodations because cherries are wet? Um, probably the, the same thing. It will just probably turn out to be a softer mandel bread. So if you like it crispy, um, I would definitely do that second bake for um, more than probably watch it closely, but closer to the 10 minutes, maybe even longer. Hazan Mimi asks, what are your fa other favorite recipes to make for Passover? Okay, well, I have a super easy recipe um, that happens to be Beth Saltz's daughter Zoe's favorite cookie, or at least that's what she says to me. Maybe she's just being nice. Um, no, it's her favorite. <laughs> it's incredibly easy. It's for an almond macaroon, and it's basically a seven ounce um, container of almond paste that you throw in the Cuisinart. Um, I believe it's a half a cup of sugar, but I can look and we can email you with the exact um, amount. And an egg white, uh, again, I have to look and see exact amount, but you put it in the Cuisinart and then you, I pipe it onto Silpat or, or parchment and bake it. And they are the most delicious, chewy, um, cookies, those I a lot of times will put a half a maraschino cherry on the top of them for my dad. Um, so that's that's a popular one. Um, in terms of desserts, I when I have the time, I really like to make Passover rainbow cookies. They look like the Italian um, rainbow cookies with three different colors of uh, cake layer with apricot jam inside and um, melted chocolate on top. Um, okay, we're gonna go to the oven and look and see that was seven minutes, how our sliced mandel bread are looking. They're still pretty soft, so I'm actually gonna let them go for another few minutes. Um, I, if you're looking for either appetizers or main dish things. Um, there's a really great recipe from a Passover cookbook for a tricolor gefilte fish loaf. That one is a um, little bit more labor intensive, but really good. Um, what else do I like to make? Uh, well, I know that Sarah's gonna be making flourless chocolate cupcakes. There's also good recipes for really easy um, flourless chocolate cookies, which is basically um, egg whites, kosher for Passover, powdered sugar, and cocoa and chocolate chips. And those are super easy and delicious. 
Um, Passover is really good for desserts. I know that you, you wouldn't normally think that because we don't use flour, but we have some really delicious Passover desserts. What are some of everybody else's favorite recipes to make for, uh, for Passover? The ones you guys make. <laughs> Beth, you always cook. Beth makes the best brisket. Thank you. I like to make this lemon cheesecake for um, like later in the week. It's really, really good. And um, I'm trying to remember, I made something. Oh, I think I made caramel apples one year. Or maybe that was for Rosh Hashanah. I can't remember. <laughs> that was Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> yeah, I believe that was Rosh Hashanah. Um, Beth's family and my family do uh, most of our, our holidays together. Um, I grew up with Beth's husband and the kids have known each other since they were born. So and now they're going to well, be driving. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's uh, hard to wrap my head around. So someone asked, does anyone make any Mizrahi dishes? Um, forgive me, but what is a Mizrahi dish? Does that mean Sephardic? Yes. Um, well, especially in the past couple of years, yes, because now that the um, board of the, the conservative movement has allowed Kitniot, um, we can use rice and corn. Um, they're now considered kosher for Passover, even for Ashkenazi. So, um, uh, yes, and I've made. Um, I don't know if this would really be Sephardic, but um, a really good um, side dish is a quinoa salad with pomegranate seeds in it. Um, some people will also make their haroset more on the, the Sephardic side than the Ashkenazi side with more dates and things like that, as opposed to just the apples and wine and, and sugar and walnut kind of thing. dates and raisins to the mundle bread. <laughs> I think my mom just wants to throw the kitchen sink in there. Yes. <laughs> All right, we're going to check on our slices again. Okay, oops. All right, let me. Sorry for the noise for one minute. Yes, these are hot, but I guess my fingers are a little numb after all these years of baking. <laughs> okay. All right, and if you could smell, these smell really good. Um, and there is your finished mandel bread. Looks amazing. Yes. They are delicious. I highly recommend. And um, aside from the waiting and the slicing in between, it really is a pretty easy recipe. So I know that that was quicker than, uh, than Beth and I had done our run through yesterday. Um, Much no, less stressful. Can I see what up? Yes. So I can pretend like I'm eating one. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Take oh, a bite. Delicious. Super <laughs> yummy. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Those look so good, son. I want to drive over and get one. Come on you, over. Uh, you call Uber Eats. They can uh, deliver some for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
I'm sorry if I missed the beginning, but um, I see that like Trader Joe's has dried cherries. I bet it would be yummy to put in different things. Do you ever try putting in different things that I missed that part? So that's very funny. You are absolutely on the same page with my mom who has asked about putting in dried blueberries, um, raisins. Um, yeah, you could, in terms of dry ingredients, you could put anything in either in addition to or instead of the chocolate chips. Um, my mom had also asked about fresh blueberries or maraschino cherries. With those, the mandel bread will probably turn out a little bit softer just because of the excess liquid um, from the cherries in general and then from blueberries as they bake, they burst and give off um, some juice. So the mandel bread will probably just be purple or red and um, a little bit softer, but definitely it's delicious none the, nonetheless. <laughs> But then you could pretend so, like they're health food because they have fruit in them and you wouldn't. Yes, like absolutely. <laughs> and blueberries. So Sarah are Davis. <laughs> Sarah Davis just joined. She's the one who's teaching the chocolate cupcakes at 11. So if anyone is joining the cupcake class at 11, um, it's fine to take a break and then come back or we can just still hang out and chat until 11 whatever you want. But if you need a break, then we'll see you back here at 11 for Sarah's cupcakes. <laughs>